Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I painted these quick and easy landscapes that only took me six minutes each. These are super beginner friendly and I wanted to show you how you could paint a sunset versus a stormy day, so let's get started. I'm using a 9x12 140 pound cold press piece of watercolor paper, my Letter Sparrow handmade watercolor paints, my Polina Bright Mop Brush and Round Brush, but you can use any brush, water, and paper towel. I'm also going to be using masking tape around the entire edge of the painting. This helps when you're painting landscapes and you're using a lot of water so that the painting doesn't warp. Once it fully dries, you can take the tape off and everything is perfectly flat. And then I'll be using a piece of tape down the center to separate the two paintings. So I have my little palette for my Letter Sparrow paints, but I need a lot of wash for landscapes. And so I'm using this butcher tray that I have. Um, it's perfect for getting a really large amount of watercolor wash. So I'm going to be grabbing color from my Letter Sparrow uh, palette, and then I'll be putting it into the butcher tray so that you can see. So first I'm grabbing yellow and I'm adding some magenta to that to get this really pretty orange. I want a really watery wash to just completely saturate the sky. So I'm using a number three Polina Bright mop brush. You can use any brush that holds a lot of water, but you just really want to make sure that your sky is fully saturated. And I'm continuing to add water to this mixture. I want it super, super light and really, really watery. So I've covered about two thirds of my painting with my sky color, my initial sky color. And I want this line where the sky is going to meet the land to be really, really light because that's going to be the lightest point in the sky. And so I really watered that area down, but we'll come back to that. I've added a little bit more magenta to the existing orange color that we had made. And now we have a really nice red. I like to curve my strokes downward into the painting and keep them really short and quick, leaving enough yellow and not overwhelming the entire sky with the first initial cloud color. I'm adding some more magenta to our mixture to get a deeper red, and then I'm going to add that mixture just to the top of those swipes that we've already made. This starts to help define a cloud pattern in our sky, which makes it look really appealing. I want our clouds to look less like watercolor strokes and more like clouds. And so I'm drying off my brush and then I'm just making sweeping motions very, very lightly over that top existing color. This is just to help everything blend and make it look more of a sweepy look than a blotted watercolor look. I also added a few extra light strokes as we start to come down the paper in this color. I'm adding more yellow to get a very bright orange, and this is going to be our third cloud color. I'm sweeping the paint onto the paper with a really light touch, just like I was doing with the other strokes before. And really the main goal is to make sure that all of the colors are really represented. I'm not overtaking one of the colors that are previously there, but that I'm also making sure that everything doesn't look like a bunch of straight lines with the watercolor brush. I want everything to blend and look really wispy and have that same cloud pattern we have going. We still want that line where the sky and the land meet to be super wet. So I wetted my brush. It still had a little bit of orange, which was perfect. It very lightly gave a nice blend from where we're going to have our land up into the sky. All right, now the sky is completely done and we're going to focus on the land. This color is called Havana, and it's a really nice burnt umber color, and I'm just adding a little bit of this Veronese green to give it some depth. This wash is really watery, and I want it to touch into the sky and have a nice blending effect. I want the center of my painting to be the focus, and I want it to be where it feels like the light is gathering, that the sun is setting, and it's the brightest point in the painting. So I'm just kind of curving this color, making it bigger on the edges and bringing it down to a point into the center, adding a little bit more Havana here for some contrast and just really letting everything blend. At this point, I felt like we had established the Havana, the brown color, and I wanted to add in some green because now we need to start adding some contrast into the land. 
I've added more Viennese to the Havana and now we get this beautiful green to give more contrast to our land. At this point in the painting, the bottom part of our painting is dry, meaning that now we are going to be using the technique called wet on dry. I like using this technique when doing the land part of landscapes because you're able to get this nice texture between the brush and the paper where you get this beautiful white space and you start getting these little peaks of white paper that gives you um, a nice contrast and depth in the painting. And in this painting, it felt like maybe it was some areas of water, like maybe there's a little pond or a river in this landscape down below. And so I just kind of rolled with it. I added some yellow to the green to give it now some brightness. We went from that brown to a darker contrast. Now we're adding in the brightness. That's usually my recipe for landscapes. And then we're bringing more of that brown back in, but in a higher pigment. And you can see that throughout the painting that whatever color I'm working on, I'm adding a little bit, almost like little bushes or trees back up into the lighter spots of the painting where um, it's still wet. And this really creates a lot of depth and interest and it reflects back into the other areas of the painting. Now I've added some Maya to the Viennese green and Havana mixture we had already going on. The Maya is kind of like an indigo. I really like adding a dark color to the bottom of my painting. I feel like it really grounds the painting and frames it. And then I bring that color back up into the rest of the painting so that it again reflects downward. I like to add that little bit of contrasting color either where two colors are meeting or below a reflection point. Now the white space that I've created in the middle of the painting, I am imagining it as some type of water. And water on your landscape is going to reflect the sky colors. So I'm adding a little bit of orange and pink into that water, not overwhelmingly so. I just don't want it to look white because more realistically, it would reflect the colors of the sky and the colors of the grassy field around it. And that is it with that painting. I feel like it has a really nice effect, um, even though it was super simple and clocked in at just over six minutes. So now we're going to do the more moody, rainy landscape painting, and I'm grabbing a lot of this indigo wash. We're really going to need a lot of the indigo wash. So I'm preparing that, but then I'm going to rinse it off just a little bit and paint the entire paper with water. So it's going to be a little bit blue because I've created this indigo wash, which is kind of what I wanted but I'm saturating again the entire paper up until that two thirds point so that it's really watery, really wet and saturated. And then we're going to add in our rain clouds. I'm going over with my brush, this line at the bottom where the sky and the land meet so that the paint is really light. Now we're going to be dropping in our indigo wash. Because the indigo color is really the only color we're using, we can use our paint strokes and the amount of pigment that we put down to create depth in the sky. Because obviously our paper is still very wet, it's going to be very blendy and give us that nice rainy look. So I'm covering the sky a little bit more than I did on the sunset one because it's just full of these dark, heavy rain clouds. And I'm doing the strokes a little bit thicker because I'm just thinking of these clouds as being a little bit heavier and fuller. After wetting my brush, I picked up more indigo paint and then put that straight onto the paper. So this color is very pigmented at this point. I want to create contrast and depth. So we're going to do some around the colors that we already have, but I want the three distinct colors of that super first light blue, the light to medium indigo first cloud color, and then now this heavy contrasting cloud color. I'm also doing more um, bubbly strokes because I want them to look, like I said earlier, very full and very stormy. So they're a little bit more bubbly, cloudy. I'm, I'm doing less of the, the wispy strokes from the sunset and more deeper, thicker strokes to make everything look fuller. I'm softening up the clouds, beefing them up a little bit, and then as the clouds get closer to the land, 
they're getting smaller and smaller and then non-existent in that space right before the land so that the clouds look like they're up top high fully ready for a storm now the sky on this one is finished and we're not going to touch it again we're going to let it settle and we're going to focus on the land i'm mixing magenta in with this maya blue which is that indigo to create a really dark deep purple that's perfect for this stormy color palette now when i created that line for maybe a distant mountainscape it was just too harsh of a line for me so all i had to do was wet my brush and then do a swipe across and it blended up nicely into the sky i'm adding magenta to this mixture to start creating depth and more interesting colors as we start going down this landscape and again we're using the wet on dry technique so we're going to start letting some of that white space in the paper shine through and continue to add more spots of color towards the top as we go down. I am adding some green into this landscape because realistically there would be green in the landscape, but this Viennese is the perfect moody green and adding it to that pinky purple color we already had, it just creates just the most beautiful green. I am obsessed with that green. <laughs> So again, my formula is three colors, one that blends up and then two that start to add contrast and brightness. And now we're going to bring more of that purple, which is that blending color up into the sky, back down into the painting. And as I'm blending that into the green and adding more of a focus as we come downward, again, I'm adding some of those little spots of this color up into the rest of the painting where some of the colors meet and around some of these white spots for the reflections. I added indigo to the mixture and I'm just dabbing in some areas that look like trees or bushes, anything to bring a heavy contrast up into the painting so it doesn't look flat. And I'm adding that same really dark color to the bottom of the painting because I like to frame the painting with the really dark color. And then we're going to fill in that white area with some more color. So I'm going to mix some more Viennese, indigo, and magenta together until I get just the perfect mix of this dark green that I'm looking for to add a nice contrast, but also bring in some more color down into this white space. The white space in this one, I didn't wanna be as prominent, just maybe some glistening areas because the scene is already very rainy. So I'm just adding more depth and contrast because I really want this whole landscape to be dark and moody and i'm covering up pretty much all of the white space especially down here towards the bottom with my brush already full of that green mixture i picked up some magenta and so it made it this really beautiful dark purple color and that's what i filled in the rest of those spaces with i added a bit more indigo to my purple color to create more of that dark contrasting color to frame around the painting again. I also touched some spots up by where my dark bushes and trees were. Now I'm at the point in the painting where I was done adding color, but I thought it just still needed some more detail, some more texture. So I'm going through and taking paint off with my little round brush and I'm actually using my hand that you can't really see, it's kind of off camera, to grab the paint off. So my hand gets very messy, but in the moment I always do these things. I think I'm not gonna use a paper towel. I'm just gonna swipe it with my hand. So anyway, that's what I'm doing off camera is I'm just grabbing the paint literally off my brush while I pick up some of this color. But I think it really helps to lighten up some of the areas of the painting because it did get a little bit too dark and I wanted to have a little bit of highlights some areas where the colors are brighter i also used the end of my brush to create some texture like some bushy leafy textures in some of the bushes and trees and then that was it now always the most satisfying part of any painting is taking the tape off because once you take the tape off i feel like you can actually see your painting and it's just even more beautiful than before. And that's how I felt when I took the tape off of these paintings. Thank you all for being here today while we painted these quick and easy landscape tutorials. I hope you loved this one. I know I really did. And I will see you all next time.